Hello, Genius Blogger Toolkit community. My name is Megan, and I am the outreach lead here at Meet Edgar. And today we're going to go over how best to use Edgar with your blog. So one of the best reasons that you should use a social media scheduling tool that focuses on evergreen content when promoting your blog online is because it allows you to do less work while still getting traffic to those sites that you spent so long, those blog posts you spent so long creating, and all of that value that you researched and that you put into a beautiful piece of writing doesn't just get a spike when you send it out the first time, but it allows you to make sure that you're continuing to get traffic over and over over again. So today we're going to take a quick tour around Edgar, a little demo on how to use me Edgar, and then chat a little bit about the strategy behind doing a little less work, but still getting more traffic to your site. So I'm going to share my screen and do a quick demo. If you have any questions at all about how to use Edgar or anything that we can help you with, there is a chat box over on the right hand side, and we'd love for you just to go ahead and put your questions there. But as we go throughout this demo, um, I'm going to focus on some of the features that are best used for blogging specifically. However, remember with Edgar's category based system of posting, we do always recommend that you upcycle the blog post that you write into different status updates. So when you first log into me, Edgar, this is what you'll come to your accounts tab from this upper navigation menu. You can hook up pages, groups, Instagram accounts, LinkedIn profiles, LinkedIn pages, Pinterest accounts, and Twitter accounts to me, Edgar. Our philosophy behind social media posting is that you want to amplify your message out to as many places as possible. Remember, every single social media status update is an opportunity to drive traffic to your blog. So the way that we really like to think of social media is it's a place for people to engage with your content, to get to know the behind the scenes of you a little bit better, and to drive traffic to a space online that you own, like a blog or a podcast, where people can find you even if they don't have a social media account or something, God forbid, would happen and those profiles shut down. So we recommend you hook up all your social media accounts here. The next step is going to be to come to this categories tab. So categories in Edgar are going to allow you not only to get a variety of content sending out, but allow you to easily upcycle the blog posts that you have. So the process of upcycling is taking one well researched piece of content and making sure you get at least five to 10 status updates out of it. So you can do this by making categories called like tips or blog post videos or something like that. If you make a tips category after you finish a blog post and you publish it to your blog, our suggestion would then be to get five different maybe pull quotes from within that and maybe put them on a background in Canva or do just a text only tip to Twitter. Something that if someone doesn't have the time to actually click through, leave the social network and read your entire blog, they can still gain value from the content that you're putting out there. Other ideas for upcycling a blog post is taking that and speaking to maybe two or three main points onto your iPhone camera so that people who love to consume content in video format rather than reading it can still get the benefit of the value that you researched and produced. So categories here in Me Edgar, they're completely customizable. You can click this little pencil icon and rename a category, or you can click to add your own categories here. Once you get your category set up, it's going to be time to start actually loading content into Edgar. Now, there's a few ways that you can load content into Edgar. The first way is going to be with this add new content button right here. So when I click to add new content in Edgar, I'm going to go ahead and select the type of category post that I want to add. So if I want to make a blog post, I'm going to put this into my blog post category, check off the permissions of where this post can go, and then write my status update here. If you put a URL in here, so let's say I'd like to send people to meet Edgar and I want to know what this is going to look like once it sends out. This little eyeball icon right here that I can click on will allow me to see like if there's a Facebook preview that's been generated so I can really rest assured and know what it's going to look like once it sends out. If you'd prefer not to use that preview, but you'd like to add your own images or videos, you can always do so with these icons and click on save to library. The library in Edgar is where all of your posts are stored. So everything that you add to Edgar will always remain in the library here. 
this is the kind of evergreen portion that works so well for the blog post that you're writing, because once Edgar sends it out based on the schedule you set, which we'll look at in a minute, he's going to hold it in your library to send out again in the future to make sure people who didn't have the opportunity to see it the first time or your new followers can still gain that well-researched piece of content that you have. So there's a couple other ways of actually getting content into the library, and that's found in this import tab. So this import tab here will allow you to upload a spreadsheet of content. Super simple process. If you ever want to do that, click on this learn more hyperlink and it'll direct you to our help center where you can see an example spreadsheet where the first column is just the status update. The second column is the category you'd like it to go into. The second one is awesome for bloggers here, and that is our RSS feed connection. So if I have a blog, let's say my Meet Edgar blog posts that I'd like to send out to social media, I'm just going to put our URL in here and click on find RSS feed. This will go ahead and do all the work for you finding the RSS feed. So all you need to do is categorize it into your Meet Edgar categories, tell Edgar where the blog posts are allowed to send out to on social media, and choose if you'd either like to send these directly to your library or to a pending content queue. If I send them directly to my library, Edgar will check whatever feeds I've added here every 24 hours. If a new post has been released within that time frame, Edgar will automatically make a status update with the title and the URL, and it'll send out based on when that category is on your schedule, which we'll look at in a second. If I send this to my pending content queue, it'll go to the pending queue, which is also in the library. Pending allows you to approve, reject, or edit a post. So this is fantastic. Pending is going to be right here. If you have content that you say are bringing in from other people's blogs that you'd like to collaborate and promote out on social media um, as some recommended read and curated content, you can send it to pending and then you can come and approve it to your library, reject it, or you can click on edit here and you can edit the content. You can see it brings in the title and the URL. So all you would need to do is add in a little bit of your own thought leadership to tell people why you're sharing it, to ask them their opinion, to get them to really engage with that content. So once you have all of that content in your Meet Edgar library, it's going to be time to tell Edgar when to send it out. There are two main ways of scheduling in Edgar. The first way is manually scheduling your content. So when you click to add new content to Edgar, and again, you check off the permissions of where it can go, you write your content right here. Right down here next to the Save to Library button, there's a drop down arrow. Now, when I click this drop down arrow, you'll get a Schedule, Send, and Save option. Schedule, Send, and Save is how you manually tell Edgar the day and time you want this post to send out. So if you're someone just getting started and you don't want to use an evergreen strategy yet, go ahead and use the schedule send and save feature. If this is populated with a date and time, Edgar will hold this content until this date and time is reached. He'll send it out to whatever accounts are attached over here on the left, and then he'll go ahead and leave it in the library. Or if this is a post that you never want to send out again, like it's a one-time post, under advanced settings, just make sure to mark it as a use once post here. So that's how you can just manually start scheduling your content for this time of year, especially get all of that content scheduled so you can enjoy the holiday season with your friends and family. Take a little digital detox by removing those apps from your phone, but still know your content will be fed out to your followers feeds. The second way of scheduling an Edgar is going to be from the schedule tab right up here. And this is really awesome for you guys being genius bloggers here because you're allowing Edgar to reshare your blog post on a schedule you set. Again, making sure that you realize only about 6% of your followers on any social network ever see the content you're putting out there. So if you're able to strategically get an evergreen schedule going, you're able to make sure the hard work you're doing is seen by more people over time. So here is a weekly view of the schedule you're going to set up with your categories. It's a one week view, but it repeats over and over again. So you do only have to set it up once. Super simple setup. You'll just choose when you want to send a content item out. So let's say Tuesdays at 10 a.m. I'm going to go ahead and tell Edgar I'd like to send one of my blog posts out to these accounts. So over here, I'm again checking off the permission of where these accounts can send and clicking save. How these time slots work with the library is a last in first out rotation. So when Edgar comes upon this time slot on your schedule, the most recent post you added to that category in your library will be the first post that sends out. Edgar will then take that post and put it to the end of the line in the category. 
Next time Edgar gets to this time slot, he'll send the next update out, put it to the end of the line in the category and move along. So he's working his way through all of the posts within that category in the library. Once he's posted all of the posts in there, he's going to start from the top again. So this is the evergreen nature of his scheduling system. So last in first out rotation means you know how often things repeat based on the ratio of how many content items you add to that category in the library versus how many times you put that category on your schedule. So let's say you put 10 content items in your blog post category and you put that category on your schedule once, it'll be 10 weeks before anything repeats. If you put it on your schedule twice, it'll be five weeks before anything repeats. If you're continuously adding new content, Edgar will always favor that new content before he repeats any of the older content. So again, with your blog posts specifically, you want to think about when your audience is going to be reading those posts. Do they have time in the morning to read those posts or are they rushed getting their kids out to school, getting ready, and they wouldn't have time to read your blog? Well, then don't put that category in the morning. Put it in the evening when maybe their kids are asleep and they have more time to read. Or perhaps your community is full of people who take their lunch break and would rather read and enrich their lunch um, by reading one of your blog posts. Perhaps put that category in the afternoon. So really think about how these categories can support what's going on in your followers day so that when your content shows up in their feed, it's not seen as an interruption. It's seen as a welcome piece of content that is educating and entertaining people because those are the two things that we really want to focus on doing in social media. The more we can educate and entertain people, the more they're actually going to get excited to see our content, get excited to make sure that they are in in the right community because that content speaks exactly to their pain points and it actually gives them a solution for those pain points. So giving them tips, giving them educational resources, making them feel an emotion that they're understood or they're seen. These things can all be accomplished with getting the proper mix of categories. And then you can sprinkle in a few promotional categories during the week so that once you've educated and entertained and created a great community for people to hang out in, your promotional posts are seen as helpful because people get excited that they want to go further with your information. They get excited to pay you rather, again, than just seeing your status updates as interrupting them connecting with their friends and family. The way you know when things are going to go out in Edgar is this Q tab. So you're adding posts to the library, you're scheduling them either manually with the schedule send and save feature or on the weekly repeating schedule. And then the Q tab will show you the date and what's going out. In the queue, you can always sort it to see like what you have going to a certain account or from a certain category with these drop down filters on the left. If you ever want to stop all automation, you can always do that in the queue by clicking pause here. Now there is another feature that I love for Pinterest and Twitter specifically that I'd love to call out here before we get into a little more strategy, and that's our variations feature. So variations in Edgar were actually built specifically because um, Twitter makes rules against evergreen rotations in that they say you cannot send the exact same tweet to the same Twitter account more than once anymore. You can still share the same blog post, share the same link or, link or thought leadership concept, but it just can't be the exact same text that precedes it. So if you want to reshare a blog post within the Edgar, this is how you do it. Now our variations feature will work for any of the accounts, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. It just was specifically built to solve this one problem. So you're gonna check off where this content can go over here. You're then gonna go ahead and write your status update and add your link here. You'll notice that there's an add variations button. This is gonna pop up a second text box where I'm able to alter the language that I'm using. So this way I can either ask a question about the blog that I'm sharing, share a personal story about why I wrote it, get a pull quote from within that article, and I can still reshare that same link out onto Twitter, or it just helps add a little variety and spice to the other accounts. Now, Edgar will also work backwards from any variations that you do add here. So this variation, the second one that I added, once this whole post is up in the rotation based on when that category is on your schedule, Edgar will send the second rotation of uh, the second variation first. He'll have to expire it for Twitter. He'll keep it active if this piece of content is attached to the other accounts. He'll then take this whole piece of content and put it to the end of the line in the category. The next time this post is up in the rotation, he'll send variation number one. 
So my best suggestion, especially if you're using the Edgar for Twitter, is to add four or five variations initially when you're getting your blog posts or your content in here. And that way you know you have a bunch of variations in that rotation. The way you can see if you need to add more variations to posts is in this library button right here. You're gonna choose the social network to sort your library by posts that are attached to Twitter. And then this last filter down here, you're gonna say has publishable variations is no. And this is gonna sort your library and it'll show you all of the posts that are completely expired for Twitter because they've already sent. If I wanted to use this again, I just click edit right here and then I am able to go ahead and add in more variations. For Pinterest specifically, this is awesome because Pinterest does have a term of service that says you cannot send the exact same pin more than five times in a month. So on Pinterest, it is a much more um, kind of search engine driven network. However, for bloggers like you guys especially, it is one of the best social platforms to be on to get traffic because it, that search engine is going to populate in searches that people are doing with keywords. So if you're laying the foundation and researching what keywords people are searching within your industry to find content such as the stuff you create, your content can live uh, post to Pinterest and live there for months on end and still be found in searches. A little bit different of a nature than a platform like Instagram or like Facebook where people don't search on it quite as often. So for Pinterest, if you'd like to share something on Pinterest more than five times in a month, the good news is Pinterest sees fresh content as a new graphic. So all you need to do is create a few graphics for every single blog post that you're creating. We like to do this in Canva just because it gives you the proper dimensions and it's super easy to create a template that you're just switching in and out the title and a couple of great graphics in there. Um, the reason we really like doing this is because we love working smarter, not harder here at Meet Edgar and you don't wanna have to recreate the wheel every single time. So for Pinterest, again, if you're checking off that you'd like this to go to Pinterest, you also have to additionally select the board you'd like it to go to. You'll notice if a piece of content is connected to Pinterest, you get a couple of other options down here. So in this description part, you're gonna go ahead and write the description of what you'd like to say. The title here is gonna be that larger text on the pin. And then the destination link will be the actual link that you're sending people to if they click through on your pin. You're then gonna attach either a photo or a video. Pinterest also really is giving preference to video in their algorithm right now we're seeing. So if you do want to attach a Pinterest video, I would absolutely recommend doing that. Once you've created one version and you click to add another variation, you can do the same exact text and do a different um, graphic. And this will be seen as a brand new fresh pin in the eyes of Pinterest, allowing you to share that same blog post or share that same lead magnet out on Pinterest more than five times in a month if you'd like to do that. So media variations here are best used for Pinterest so you can attach a different graphic and every time this comes up in your rotation, Edgar will send a different graphic with that blog post out. All right, so those are your two really great evergreen strategies for Pinterest and for Twitter. Again, these variations, media variations or tax variations can be used for Facebook, Instagram, all of that fun stuff. And I definitely recommend doing so. Again, you never know what language it's gonna catch someone's eye at the right time. And resharing that piece of content could just be the thing that converts them into trusting that you are the right person to solve that problem, to bring them closer to their dream outcome of what they want in life. Because that's really all marketing is when it comes down to it. It's telling people how you help them and it's telling people um, that you are there in order to make a difference in their life. All right, so that's how you're gonna best use Meet Edgar for your blog content. I suggest, like I mentioned this time of year, especially manually scheduling out some great holiday content with that schedule, send and save feature, and then putting a couple of category specific time slots onto your Meet Edgar schedule so that you can rest assured your evergreen content will still be rotated through. As we're talking a little bit more about the strategies that you can use within Me Edgar, the main social media success that you'll see is using your categories correctly. So when we were looking at those categories within the app here, you'll realize that the more systemized your content distribution is, the more engagement, reach, and impact you can have 
on your community. Sometimes that gets a little counterintuitive, I think, when people are like, wait a minute, the more systemized I am, the more natural conversations I have, but it's totally true because you're gonna be sitting down with the intention of what you want to say and when you want to say it to people, which again is why you wanna think about where those categories are going on your schedule. So some categories that I suggest thinking about creating within your Me Edgar account that we see work really well is any sort of how-to content. So any sort of content that's going to educate people. Questions. So often I hear from the community, oh my gosh, I know engagement is so important. What the social networks are looking for is that meaningful social interaction, but I'm not getting any. Yet when we actually go out and look at the content that we're sharing, we actually start to notice we're not asking our community any questions. We need to make sure we're putting an exclusive call to action to ask people their opinion about what we're writing, what they liked best about it. One of the best ways I think to train, train your followers that you want them to engage with you is to ask icebreaker questions that might not have anything to do with your business. This is just fun for people to answer. If you've never tried asking people like, hey, share a GIF of how your day is going or drop an emoji of how you um, are going to spend the holiday season or something like that. These things are really fun for people. They love showing off their gift game. They love giving advice on like the latest book that they read. So think about these more conversational items that you'd ask your friends in real life. Social media should be a social place and we overcomplicate it so often thinking that we have to create different types of content when really we just have to think about having a conversation with our followers in real life and that's what's going to really engage them. So make a questions category in Edgar. You can go out and Google like 100 icebreaker questions, copy and paste those on in there and you'll start actually letting your community know, hey, I want you to talk back to me. And that way, when you put a call to action, perhaps at the end of your blog post, asking people to give you a little bit of feedback, they've been trained that, that you actually want that feedback. And it's more likely that they'll answer those harder questions if they've answered some of the more fun ones. Other things that do excellent on social media are quotes. That is because it is one of the fastest moving um, networks out there. You know, Twitter moves so fast, Instagram moves so fast. You need to find a reason to have people stop their scroll and anything happy and inspirational truly does help people stop their scroll if it identifies with them. So think about the characteristics that your community identifies with and go out and seek some quotes. I would recommend doing a mix of thought leadership quotes on your own. Thought leadership quotes are really great if you can make them slightly polarizing too. So think about the topics in your industry or in your niche that you might disagree with. These not only let people know they're in the right place when they see that, it also creates this sort of um, aspect of community that is I don't want this to sound weird, but it's sort of like an us against them, which is really important in marketing. When you create communities, creating a community needs to be against something else, right? And it doesn't have to be like against another person or against another company. For example, here at Me Edgar, we're a social media automation tool. So we're going against the fact that you don't want to have to log in to social media all the time and post all the time. That's going to be a time suck, right? So that's our enemy, that time suck. So we wanna make sure that those are really present in our thought leadership quotes. Other things that you wanna think about adding to your categories um, are things like behind the scenes content. Remember people buy from people mostly on social media. So making sure that you have photos of your face works really well. It's some of the most engaged with content on social media. So as you're developing these different categories, also start to notice what categories are doing best on social media in order to really gain the attention of more followers, you need to follow the bright spots. So if you create a quotes category and you're not seeing a ton of your engagement of people sharing it, saving it, liking it, perhaps pull back on that category on your Meet Edgar schedule. Log in and remove that category and add a different one. It, it should always be seen as experimental. What content is supporting your followers the best? because they should truly be helping you create the content. And if you're listening and you're doing the right things, you'll see traction add up over time because you're creating content they actually want to engage with. The next thing once you create your categories is to set a batching schedule. So a batching schedule is incredibly important because it's a place where you can come in and say, okay, I'm gonna sit down and create social media status updates once a month. And that means you're only creating status updates 12 times a year rather than doing it on a daily basis. 
If you're going to cook a batch of cookies, you're not going to get all those ingredients out to cook just one. Same with social media status updates. So batching math becomes a ton easier if you're able to do it with categories and it's a lot less overwhelming. So some easy batching math that I like to throw out there is let's say you wanna do six status updates a day, five days a week. So every weekday you wanna send out six different status updates to all your social networks. That would mean you would have to create 30 status updates a week. Now, doing that math out for a month, that means 120 status updates a month need to be created. That can sound a little overwhelming to sit down and do all of those at one time. However, if I break it up into six different categories that I've created, that means I only have to add 20 status updates to each category. And this seems a lot more doable in this system where I can say, okay, I'm going to get 20 quotes or okay, I'm going to get 20 blog posts that I'm gonna add more variations to. And this is a lot more of a great process to say, you know, the first Monday of every month, I'm just gonna sit down, add 20 status updates to each of my categories and be good to go for the month. So think about the things that you can do in order to really systemize this and make sure you're not creating status updates more than once a month. And I promise you, your blog content will get better. Your business will feel more manageable and social media will become something that you enjoy rather than dread in your business. Once you have a batching plan, we need to make sure we're distributing our content properly. So distributing our content properly means taking an evergreen approach when it comes to social media and your blog. Again, because so few people see it the first time, you need to make sure that opportunity is available. I always like to say it takes about seven to 10 touch points for someone to start trusting a brand online. A touch point can even be something as simple as you creating an emotional bond with someone with a meme that you send out and they feel understood, they feel connected, they laugh, they smile. That emotion is now connected to that status update, which is connected to your brand's name, which means that emotion is connected to your brand and we all buy way more on emotions than we do on logic. So your distribution schedule should really be focusing on 80% entertaining and educational content, 20% promotional content to get those seven to 14 touch points. And then once one of your promotional status updates shows up, people are gonna be much more excited to buy. All right, so once you set your distribution, you wanna start thinking about this term to write once, promote twice. So it's said that if you create evergreen content, if you create one blog post, you should spend maybe like an hour writing it if you spend an hour writing it, you should spend eight hours promoting it. I don't know who has time to spend eight hours promoting anything anymore in life. So again, that's why you wanna get it into your Meet Edgar library and let Edgar continue to cycle through and make sure that we see you know, some blog posts we've written three years ago are still continuing to get traffic from social media because we keep sharing them. I promise you might think that your followers are going to get sick and tired of um, hearing perhaps something, but I'm gonna tell you a little secret here. Number one, no one cares if they see something more than once. You've seen the same commercial on TV more than once and you do not get mad. And if it's quality content and it makes you laugh, it's sometimes even enjoyable to see that commercial again. And number two, you see everything you post, but your followers most definitely do not. So think about the fact that you could actually be missing out on traffic to your site, but you could be missing out on helping someone if you're not resharing that piece of blog content. All right. So once you've done your right once, promote twice evergreen schedule, it's time to start upcycling your content. So upcycling your content, again, is the strategy of taking one really well-researched piece of content and making different status updates out of it. So you could do a blog post and turn it into a podcast by simply reading that blog post into a microphone. This is actually how our podcast social post got its start. And it was a great way to reuse that and get a different medium and more content for social media without having to spend a ton more time of research on it. You could also take that and make sure that you're getting little snippets from it to include in your newsletter so that you're not having to write things twice. Not everyone goes to your blog, but people might be opening your newsletter. Same deal, that in your newsletter, how can you repurpose that onto social media? Make sure you're not reinventing the wheel with every piece of content that you're putting out there. All right, so we've gone through creating our category, setting up our batching math, setting a schedule, making sure that we're upcycling our content the last step in this five-step process is to engage with your followers. So, so much of the time, again, we hear that we know engagement is important, but we're not really sure how to do it. 
I suggest the same way that you're batching your social media status updates, you go in and you batch your engagement. So every day at the end of the day, leave five to 10 minutes to go to your history tab in Edgar. Once you're in your history tab, you can click the arrow next to the timestamp. It'll direct you to that post on the social network where you can see if you have any comments or anything you need to respond to. So that is gonna be your five step process. And if you follow this, I promise you, social media will become a joy in your business because you're able to create a community who can count on your content consistently showing up and who can know your origin story because you're resharing your posts and you're bringing them along on their journey. The best thing to remember when promoting your blog on social media is that people are in different stages of their journey. Some people are just becoming aware that your product or service exists, while others, their pain point is so strong right now that they want to purchase a product or service that's gonna solve it, and they're deciding if you're the right one to solve from. If you do a good mix of content from all of these categories, your content can speak to each person who is just stumbling upon who you are down to the person who's deciding to purchase or not and create trust amongst each segment of these people. So each status update you're putting out there should have one job to do. Don't stress that that status update might not be speaking to the decision-making person if perhaps it's just a brand awareness post. So it's something like a brand awareness post for us here at Meet Edgar, we do a lot of talking about like how to work remotely. We've been a remote company since the very beginning, since we launched in 2014. So we have a lot of tips and tricks on how our team works really well as a remote team. We post a lot of those on social media. Now it doesn't have a lot to do with our social media scheduling tool. However, if someone sees that and they're looking to get to know remote work a little bit better and they didn't know a social media scheduling tool existed, we've made them become aware. So in their brain, if they need it in the future, they know we exist. So think about categories that you can add to Edgar that might just be for that awareness phase. So they don't really have anything to do with the content or the product that you're actually selling, but you're bringing people in to get to know that your product and brand exists through these other channels. So your categories, again, are completely customizable, and I really recommend sitting down and doing some thinking about what types of posts are going to do best to connect with your followers and bring people along the journey. All right, so if you guys have any more questions at all, please let me know. We run office hours every single day and I'm more than happy to go through demos with you. You can always email support at meegger.com. We love to see bloggers out there getting their work out into the world and your success makes us so happy. So let us know what your biggest goals are and what you're so excited um, to be doing in the new year. Thanks so much for coming today, guys. If you do have any other questions, like I said, support at meetegger.com is the best place to reach us.